To help us learn to use InfoPath 2010's many tools, we'll create a travel expenses form, much like this one. And we begin by learning to use layout tables to structure our form. Starting in InfoPath Designer's Backstage View, with the new option selected, we see a number of options to base our form on, including pre-made and blank form templates, and a variety of data sources. We could choose to have our form collect data stored in an Access or SQL database, query and submit data to an existing web service, use an XML document or schema as the data source, or base it on a SharePoint server data connection file. We'll learn about data connections and SharePoint integration in other clips. To start our form, we'll choose the blank form template option. We can then define the data source during the design process. Click Design Form. Remember, the design process is much easier when you have an example to follow. The example could be simply a sketch of a new form's layout, or as we'll use here, the completed upper section of a travel expenses form. Notice that when choosing the blank form option, InfoPath starts us off with a two-row table that includes a placeholder for adding a title. While this may be helpful, we're not obligated to use it. We can click inside the table, then select the entire table by clicking the box outside the table's upper left corner, and press Delete on the keyboard to remove it. Now, switch to the Insert tab on the ribbon, and click the Tables Groups More button. Here we see a variety of pre-designed layout tables to choose from. Hover the mouse over each one to see a brief description of the layout. Then, click a layout to begin with. It already has a color scheme applied to it, along with formatted text input areas, like the header area, where we'll click and add a form title. We'll learn to make color and font adjustments in other clips, and in a clip on modifying tables, we'll work more with this table's layout. But for now, let's add another table to our form. First, click outside the right end of this first table and press Enter twice on the keyboard to place the cursor where our next table will go. Following our example, we'll need a table with five columns and two rows. In the Tables group on the ribbon, click the Custom Table button. Here we could use the grid to visually select the correct number of rows and columns. Instead, we'll click Layout Table. Now enter the number of rows and columns. Click OK and our table appears in the form. Next, click in the first cell and type Report Date. Then press Enter on the keyboard to expand the cell. This expanded area will be used later for our date picker control. We'll continue to enter text into the appropriate cells until our table looks like this. That's a good start. You can see how easy it is to design forms with layout tables. In a clip on modifying tables, we'll learn to adjust our tables to fine-tune the layout.